Hey there, I'm Kevin, the founder of Dex, and I'm here to walk you through how to best get started. Dex helps you leverage your network by showing you who you know, when to keep in touch, and where you left off. We've made it easy to stay on top of your connections, especially if you use LinkedIn. We've also built some neat features, like being able to show your connections on a map or using AI to draft responses. In this video, I'll set up an account with you and walk you through the first 10 minutes of using Dex. To get started, I'm going to go ahead and go to getdex.com and just click Get Started to fill out the initial form here. After that's done, I'm going to go ahead and create an account. And to do that, I'm going to go just use the name, email, password form here. Uh, you have the option of using your Google or Apple account here as well. But for the purpose of this walkthrough, I'm just going to go ahead and put my name in here. The first thing that you'll be asked to do is connect your LinkedIn account. This is something that I would highly recommend as LinkedIn Sync makes using Dex a lot easier. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and click this blue Connect LinkedIn Account button. Because I don't have the extension installed yet, I'm going to be prompted to install the Dex browser extension, which is required for LinkedIn Sync. I'm going to go ahead and click that link to do it now. I'm going to add it to Chrome. And then after that's done, a new window will open, and I'll pick up right where I left off on the screen for connecting my LinkedIn account. Here, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and click that blue button again. Click Continue with LinkedIn Sync. And after a moment, the sync will get started, and your LinkedIn connections will be added into Dex. Next, I'm going to go ahead and connect my first Google account. The Dex can actually show you relevant calendar events and email for your contacts when you have contacts open. But to do that, you need to connect your account. So here, I'm going to go ahead and click the blue Connect Google Account button. I'm going to connect my first Google account here after I grant permissions, then you'll also have the option of connecting one or more Google accounts after this. So it takes a minute to get the account set up and connected. And here, if you'd like, you can connect more than one Google account. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and continue with just this account. And then finally, I'm going to go ahead and install the iOS or Android app. Uh, here, there's a QR code that you can actually use with your phone to scan and download the app easily and we'll come back to that later as well. After setting up your account, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade to the full version of Dex now and start with a free trial, just so I can show you the version of Dex without any limitations. Here, now that everything is set up, let's dive in. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is import my Facebook contacts as well. I'm going to do that by going to the top right corner, clicking the import link, which is the third link from the top. And I'm going to go ahead and click the Facebook uh, button here. The Facebook import requires the Dex browser extension, but since I already installed that, I can simply just click the Continue with Facebook import button here. Uh, and this can take a, a minute or two, but this will also bring in the Facebook friends that I have. Um, here, if you would like, you would also want to import your email or calendar contacts as well. Uh, Dex doesn't actually import those in automatically. You'll have to import those in, uh, in this step or at another time. After Facebook import is complete, I'm going to go ahead and close this, go back to the Today page, and then go to the Merge and Fix page. So our Merge and Fix page will look at all your contacts and check them for duplicates so that across LinkedIn and Facebook and your phone contacts or email and calendar contacts you may have imported, you have one clean set of records. Uh, here, I'm going to go ahead and just click the Merge All in the top right-hand corner here, and wait a moment for this to complete. This could take a minute or two given uh, the number of duplicates, or depending on the number of duplicates you might have. With Merge and Fix complete, your screen should now look something like this. Uh, next, I'm going to go ahead and go to the Today page and set a few keep in touch reminders with, with our quick action flow. So our quick action flow allows you to set basically periodic reminders to keep in touch. And these are updated based off of your last interaction with someone. Here, I'm going to go ahead and press Enter to start the flow. And here, I can see you can either set uh, a keep in touch reminder of three months, six months, or a year with different keys, or just archive a contact that is no longer relevant. So here you can see I'm adding a few contacts, archiving a few contacts, and using the keyboard shortcuts to do this quickly. And afterwards, you can do more batches of contacts and organize more batches of contacts uh, quickly. And we also have this flow on the mobile app as well. By now, you should have your LinkedIn connections, your Facebook friends, and even a few keep in touch reminders in Dex. And so now I'll just go through what the product actually does. So to start, this is the Today page. It'll include uh, the day's calendar events, any keep in touch reminders that you have due for today, 
any reminders that you have to for today, and also today's birthdays. Right now, the birthdays are just from Facebook, but they could be from your phone contact book that you imported in the future. And because you connected LinkedIn, you'll also see upcoming LinkedIn title change notifications here. Um, you'll also, also notice a few links to uh, starting that quick action flow again, or to a checklist, which will help you make the most of Dex and get started as well. One more thing I wanted to point out on this page is the system of keyboard shortcuts that Dex has. You can click this icon or use the command K shortcut to open the command bar. And on the command bar, you can do most things like creating a contact or group or even searching a contact uh, through the command bar itself. Here, I'm going to go ahead and type in show keyboard shortcuts to show you all the keyboard shortcuts that are available in Dex. And one of them that might be useful on the today page is using the J and K keys or the up and down keys to move up and down between calendar events. And here I can press the enter key to open a contact, press the escape key to go back. Underneath the today page, there's a reminder page which shows you all reminders you've added in Dex. Uh, in Dex, you can add one-time reminders or uh, recurring reminders in addition to the system of keep in touch reminders that I mentioned earlier. Here, I'm gonna use the shift R shortcut to add a reminder for next month. And here I'm going to make it about I'm going to check in about fundraising for a contact. And here, if I go ahead and add this, you'll see that in the next 30 days, there'll be a reminder for Jack on April 9th. Um, this reminder will be sent in email and as a push notification if you have the mobile app installed. And you can also make this recurring every week or every year as well. Also under the today page is a birthdays page. Uh, the birthdays page shows you who on your decks is having a birthday today. Uh, if you import it from Facebook, a lot of these will start from Facebook birthdays, but if you import from your mobile app or other places, uh, the birthdays there will show up here as well. And by default, you'll get emails and push notifications on certain birthdays as well. If you set up contact sync later, you can actually sync these birthdays into Google Calendar if you choose to do so too. Next, I wanted to show you the main contacts experience. So on the left here, if you click contacts, you'll see a list of all the contacts that are indexed. Here, I'm just gonna go ahead and filter them down to say contacts where their title contains designer. And here I can see the 13 contacts that I have that are designers. Um, if I select these contacts, I can actually change them in bulk too. So here I'm just gonna set a keep in touch frequency of don't keep in touch to do all 13 designers, or I could add all of them to a group as well. And I'll create a new group called designers. And now the contacts that I filtered are part of a very specific group. Um, you can also edit these contacts and uh, manage these contacts or use keyboard shortcuts in this view as well. But the contacts view is the one place you can use to basically manage your network and manage the people that are in your decks. Also under this keep in touch section is the keep in touch page. So right under contacts, you can see keep in touch. And here, this will show you all your contacts by the keep in touch frequencies you set for them. Um, here during quick action, I've already set uh, a number of keep in touch reminders. You can see them here. And on this page, you can actually click and drag contacts from one frequency to the next as well. And you can also change this view to only show a very specific group. So let's say we're talking about the designer a group that we just created, I can go ahead and set a few of these to either every week or every month um, and just look at a glance and see who I'm trying to keep in touch with and who I'm not in touch with as well. Next thing I wanted to go over is the timeline page, which shows you all the notes that you've left in Dex. Uh, here you can filter the timeline page, you can uh, remove calendar events or remove reminders or just see uh, the notes that you've left. And you can also just quickly remember where you left off uh, from this page and search your past timeline as well. And then the last big section I wanted to cover is the maps view. So the maps view will show you all of your connections that you've added in Dex uh, on a map. And most of these locations right now will probably be from LinkedIn, but here you can see you can kind of scroll in and out and move the map around. And moving the map around will update the list on the right here. So let's say, you know, if I zoom in, this will just be all of my connections in New York, for example. Um, and if you move the map, you can see a different section of your network. I'm going to go ahead and open a contact here just by clicking a contact. And this is the same view that you'll get when you open any uh, contact. There's a few things that I want to point out here. Uh, so the first is um, here you can add a description of a contact. So let's say met as a 
this user, um, you can set a last interaction and you can kind of use plain text here. So let's say uh, three months ago. Um, here you can set a keep in touch frequency. And as mentioned before, the keep in touch frequencies will set a keep in touch by date. And this keep in touch by date actually gets updated with the last interaction. So let's say if I set the last interaction to yesterday, the frequency gets pushed back even further. Um, another thing I wanted to point out is if a contact has a LinkedIn field set, we'll also show you relevant LinkedIn information. So you can see here uh, Mike's past uh, kind of information and experience from LinkedIn. And underneath here is where you can leave notes about what you've done with Mike, the contact that we're looking at. So let's say we met for coffee in New York. So we did that, uh, you know, last week. Just a coffee. Um, you can kind of just see a running log of what you've done with a specific contact. And if a contact has an email, you'll see any related email or calendar events here as well. One more interesting thing to note is we actually have a AI Assist feature that allows you to draft a message to either reconnect or any other message. And this is actually based off of a contact's profile and your notes and description with them. So here, if I go ahead and start an AI conversation starter about reconnecting, it'll actually mention that we got coffee last week, for example, or it'll mention uh, where he's based or his past work experience. It's an interesting feature, and it might be useful when you just know when you want to reach out but don't know where to start. The right side of the panel here is pretty self-explanatory. You can either add uh, a contact to a set of groups, uh, add an email, phone, other related contact information. But another thing you can do is actually add a related contact here as well. So here, if I go ahead and search for a contact, I can actually add them as a related contact. And here, if I click that contact, then uh, that contact will open up. Another thing you can do if you want to add a related contact is uh, tag a contact in the description. So here, I'll say I met this person with you know, Eric. And after that description is saved, Eric gets automatically added as related contact for this very specific person. And then last but not least, you can also add one or more custom fields to each contact as well. So there's a little add link right here next to the custom field section. And if I click that, you can see you can either add a text category or a date field on a specific contact. Back under the map section, I wanted to also show you the groups tree, which shows you all the groups that you've created and also each contact that belongs to the groups. Um, so remember, I created a designers group with all the designers in my network. And here I can kind of click each contact and see who's in what group. Um, each contact can also belong to multiple groups. And so you can see everything at a glance here. And then finally, there's also a view for your related contacts. So here um, I can see all my contacts on one view and there's not that many contact relations just yet, but here you can actually click and drag a contact on top of another contact to add them as related contacts. And so here, if I open up Justin, you can see that the, his two related contacts are these two contacts, um, et cetera, et cetera. And you can actually narrow this view, for example, just to designers. So here, if I'm just opening up this view for my designers, um, I can click and drag and see who knows who and relate them to one another this way as well. The last thing I wanted to go over is views. So you can think of views as a set of saved filters. So here, the designer's view includes everyone with the title that contains design. Uh, the MBA view contains anyone with a title that contains MBA or any of these other school strings. Um, and the product view contains you know, people with the title of product. You can actually combine these filters and make them more specific. So here, I can add a location filter so that I only see the people within 10 miles of San Francisco, for example. Um, and then you can save that filter as well. You can create new views by clicking this Add View button and customize each view so you see fit. And what these views allow you to do is basically understand uh, who makes up your network and when you need to reach out either to hire or to fundraise or for kind of general professional purposes like finding your next job, you can break down your network into more manageable pieces. Hopefully this was useful in showing you the core experience of DEX, which is adding your connections and contacts in one place, being able to visualize it, create filters on it, set reminders on it, and also remember where you left off. But DEX and the system that you use will only be as good as the habits you create around the system, and the DEX browser extension is a big part of making sure that DEX actually is something that you use on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'll go over the DEX extension next.